live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE, covering Cisco Live 2018. Brought to you by Cisco, NetApp, and theCUBE's ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back everyone. We're here live at theCUBE in Orlando, Florida for Cisco Live 2018. I'm John Furrier, the co-host of theCUBE with Stu Miniman. It's our third day of three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Our next two guests are from NetApp, Russell Fishman, Director of Product Management, and Keith Barta, Director of Product Management. Both Directors of Product Management. One was the former CEO of Immersive, now with NetApp for a few years. Guys, great to see you. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thanks, Thanks for having us. John and Stu, thank we you. We saw you guys in Barcelona, obviously, the, the NetApp story just keeps on getting better. Also, you have core customer base. Cisco's going under transformation. You guys have been transforming ever since I started seeing NetApp arrive on the scene in the 90s. Every year there's always a new innovation. But now more than ever, you're hearing even Cisco, bellwether in the routing networking business, putting up old way, network architecture, hey, there's a firewall, you know, there's some devices in there, to a completely new, obviously cloud native, modern era. Really, things are changing. So, you know, what's your reaction to that? Obviously, you guys are part of that story. You have a relationship with Cisco. What's your reaction to that? And talk about your relationship with Cisco. So, so we obviously have a, a huge relationship with Cisco, and, and most, most folks will know about uh, FlexPod. I think that's probably the most famous way that we collaborate with these guys. And um, you know, we, we just came off the back of an amazing year. Um, you know, uh, five straight quarters of double-digit year-on-year growth. Uh, killing it in the market. Obviously, we have to brag a little bit, right? Come on, yeah, <laughs> it's the cube. Come it's on, it's the cube. We got to be a little bit excited about it. So, so we're really excited about that, and it just 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 really talks to the the strength of the relationship, right? So, there's a very strong relationship there, and it's and it's it's been there with FlexPod for eight years. And it's, you know, there's been a lot of transformation, exactly to your point, John, a lot of transformation during that time, a lot of focus on the cloud. And so one of the questions I always get asked is, why is converged infrastructure still relevant in a cloud-first world? And, it, and it's not an obvious answer. Now, clearly our customers think, think, think that it is, and, and so, does, does, so do our partners, right? But it, it's not obvious why that is. I mean, so NetApp has gone through, you talked about transformation, NetApp has gone through this massive transformation um, huge focus on clouds. I mean, we have these, uh, you know, cloud first, cloud native, focus around our data management platforms. We talk about a, a concept called the data fabric. I don't know if you've heard of the data fabric yep. before. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the data fabric really uh, talks to how our, 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 our vision for how enterprises want to manage that, that new digital currency that is data across all the silos that they want to leverage, right? Yeah. And so, yeah, it's 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 we've been able to bring some of that goodness into FlexPod, and that's why we're still relevant right now. So, yeah. 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 So, Keith, I, I think back to when converged infrastructure was built, is about simplification. We were going to take all these boxes and put it down to you know a box, and that was the new unit of measurement. Well. You know, Russell was just talking about where we've got multi-cloud. When I think of NetApp now, it's always been a software company, but now it's software in that multi-cloud world. Help connect the dot for us as to you know management of converged infrastructure into that whole multi-cloud story. Yeah, we were uh, very privileged to be acquired by NetApp uh, last March, and uh, my company, Immersive. Uh, a lot of us came actually out of Cisco, so I was one of the original FlexPod architects from Cisco and had the privilege of helping to build the compute, the network, the storage that we brought into FlexPod. And uh, a lot of our customers and our resellers kept on saying, how do we know we put it together properly? How are we following the best practices from the CVDs, from the NVAs, from the TRs? And so we took those rules and those analytics and we put them into a platform, into a SaaS-based platform, and we were able to analyze that coming from our customers' FlexPods, from within their deployments, from within their you know, multi-data centers, and, and bring that into our service, run those analytics, prove those best practices, show the deficiencies, get our resellers out there to help our customers, because you know, FlexPod is a meet in the channel play and we've, we've relied heavily on our resellers to make it a success. What was the driver for that product? When you started that company, I mean, that happened, what was the main motivation behind that? Was it analytics? Was it insight? What were some of the things that you guys were building in? Was it operational data? The, 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 the real reason was people kept on asking, how do I know, because it's a reference architecture and not a product, how, I, how do I know I did it right? Because it's really important, we're going to run our key business applications on this platform, right? My SAP, my Oracle, my you know, uh, SQL, my SharePoint, you know, my, my Outlook, right? I, I need to make sure this stuff is really going to work properly and it's going to grow and scale with the business. So I need to make sure that those 
redundant links are there. I need to make sure when I do a VMware upgrade or a Microsoft upgrade that the firmware is in alignment with the best practices in the interoperability matrix. So we wanted to make that as easy as possible so that from a single dashboard you can see all of those things, you can diagnose it quickly, you can get those email alerts and notifications. And because you end up with disparate operation teams, right, the server team, the network team, the storage team, the hypervisor team, sometimes they don't always talk effectively with each other. And from one single uh, dashboard, we're now able to show everybody where things are uh, today. And then one of my favorites, uh, when there is a problem, you know, you call either services or support and you say, hey, it's not working. And they say, well, what did you change? And when you say, well, I didn't change anything. Yeah. Right, we have that historical. The finger pointing kicks in. It was yeah. his fault. Yeah, we have the historical snapshot and trending so we can go back and look at where things were and do a comparison to where they are today. And it allows us to have a, a much faster uh, mean time to resolution. Yeah. And what do you guys call that product now within Cisco? What's it? It's, it's now called Converge Systems Advisor at NetApp. Yeah. Awesome, so what's next for Converge? So obviously, people with cloud growth, yeah. we're seeing the on-premise, Wikibon has reported the true private cloud numbers, which basically say, there's a lot of on-premise activity going on, it's going to look like cloud, it's going to operate like cloud. So Absolutely. they need to have that, so there's migration going on, but it's not a lift and shift yeah. to cloud. There's going to be, there's obviously, the hybrid cloud and multi-cloud. So, cloud, folks still buy hardware too. Sure <laughs> so they do. Like, you got to still run stuff. <laughs> yeah. Networks aren't going away, storage isn't going away, so what's next for the Converge? infrastructure play with FlexPod. How do you guys um, uh, manage that roadmap? So, so we just we just announced um, some things coming into, jointly with Cisco, coming into uh, Cisco Live. And, and uh, one of those things that we announced was uh, something called uh, Managed Private Cloud on FlexPod. Or oh, actually, no, FlexPod Managed Private Cloud. Sorry, I switch it around. So, um, and FlexPod Managed Private Cloud, it really talks to exactly what you're talking about, John, which is that what we find, you know, uh, cloud has, has, has fundamentally changed customers' expectations of what they want on-prem. They recognize the need on-prem. We live in a hybrid world. Those of us that have been in the industry long enough and have a couple of gray hairs know that there are very few transitions that are really absolute in the business, right? A lot of people pronounce that it's going to be this way or that way, and the reality is it's something in between. And that's fine because you know, cloud is just another tool in the toolbox. And you don't want to hit every nail with the same hammer. You want to find the right tool for the right job. And so, um, so, so what we've done is we've taken some of that cloud goodness, which really means you know, um, not having to worry about the underlying infrastructure, Right, worrying about the applications, being more application focused, more business value focused, more line of business focused, and being able to deliver that in a way that people can consume it on premise. So it really feels like a FlexPod delivered like a cloud, but from a management and day-to-day -day perspective, you don't have to do it. So it's flexible. It's flexible, <laughs> but, it, but, but, it, but, you, but you know, it's, 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 it's done for you. I mean, so it's your little piece of cloud sitting on-prem and you don't have to manage it or run it day to day. Let's talk about what you just said about the whole transformation. People say a certain way, basically you're kind of saying, a lot of press and a lot of analysts say, yeah. oh, you got to do this digital transformation. Customers will take a pragmatic approach, but you guys at NetApp have been talking for a long time, I've been following it, non-disruptive operations. Yes. So what you're seeing in the cloud is people will want to take those first three steps but they don't want to have to overhaul anything. Containers have proved to be a great resource there. Yeah. Kubernetes is showing a great way to have lifecycle management on the app side and infrastructure. Yeah. How does your customers and Cisco customers maintain that non-disruptive operational playbook? Because Cisco guys are going to start changing, moving up the stack too. Uh, doesn't absolutely. Mean, doesn't mean storage is going to go away, but they don't want to disrupt anything. Your thoughts? And it, it doesn't mean any of it goes away. I mean, that's, that's the funny thing. Yeah, we, we, we talk about where we want to focus, but it's as much about not having to worry about the things that we had to worry about that are just there in the future, right? So it's kind of like if you went back 200 years, you know, going to get fresh water was a big hassle. Now it isn't, it's delivered to you, right? Uh, it's, I mean, I know it sounds like a crazy analogy, but the reality is, is that we shouldn't have to worry about the basics of on-cloud, on-premise private cloud. It should just be automatic. It should be simple to, to, to execute, simple to manage, simple to order, simple to deploy, and then you focus on the, on the value. So, so that's really where we, that's what we've been really focused on. Yeah, Keith, when I listen to my, my friends in the network, working space, you know, management's still a challenge. The, the, the punchline is usually, they hear single pane of glass and they said that's spelled P-A-I-N. Yeah, uh, so, I've heard that one so, too. So, uh, talk a little bit about how your solutions tie into some of the, 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 the broader tools out there. Well, you know, 
we, we first looked at the compute layer and said, because of the extensibility of UCS Manager and the API integration, we're able to take advantage of that and, and be able to pull that data out. NXOS, right, we're able to do that exact same thing. And the background that we had at, at Cisco and, and knowing those products really well, we were able to gather all the specific data we need to look at those best practices. And, the, and you know, it's, it's a complex architecture, but it's a very elegant architecture. Uh, because of the high availability it can provide, the performance, the non-disruptive operations that you're bringing up, John. You know, we, we want to make sure that we're able to keep those things in line. So as we bring our next release of, of CSA out, we're going to be adding enterprise fiber channels, so the new MDS switches. We're going to be bringing our, our relationship with VMware and our engine to be able to ingest the configuration of VMware in. We're also bringing back our partner-centric reseller portal. So when a customer is running Converge Systems Advisor, they can share it to their reseller, and the reseller is going to be able to provide managed services, support services, uh, and professional services to expand, to repair, to augment those existing flex pods in their customer's environment. So we're really excited to be able to bring that solution back What's to What's that going to do? What's the impact of that? Because I almost imagine that's going to enable them to one, be tightly integrated, but also get data for their customers. What do you guys see as the value for the partners to take advantage of that? Well, I, I just met with a partner at our booth um, just a few moments ago and walked them through the solution. They had never seen it before. It takes a reseller a week or even multiple weeks, descending, depending on the size of the flex pod, to actually go through the configuration of the servers, the network, the storage, the hypervisors, and correlate that into a deliverable to their customer, we can do that in sub 10 minutes, sub 15 minutes. So faster time uh, to the customer value. Faster time to customer value, faster, faster time to resolution if there is a problem. And then, you know, again, they're running their key business applications on this platform. We've been doing it for eight years. We want to continue to expand upon the value that FlexPod can offer. But I wanted to add a, just a, a couple of things to what you were saying. So, you know, we, we talked about FlexPod really being a channel play. So you know, for that, that's important to us in product management, not so important to our customers. What it really means to our customers is they tend to have a very close relationship with their partners. Their partners are the ones that are really enabling FlexPod for them. What, what we're doing with Converge Systems Advisor is we are creating such a close relationship at a technical level, technology level, between the customer and the partner, but the partner's there to help them on a daily basis. Where, where there is a problem, it's almost like the telematics in your car, right? They're all the cars now, they're, they're, they're phoning back home, they're telling you where there's something wrong, you get this letter or an email, you need a service, you need, this is exactly what we're achieving. When, with the when you advisor. call support, what, what don't you want to hear? What's your model number? What's your serial number? What's your contract ID? Yeah. Wouldn't it be great if everybody's singing off the same sheet of music? Well, yeah, yeah you, right. you bring a great point there. Uh, th there was so much discussion. Well, converged infrastructure or public cloud, those are going to be really simple and they're going to be homogeneous and they're all going to be great. But yeah, you're, you're smiling and laughing yeah. because the reality <laughs> is um, you're never going to find two customers that have the same environment no matter what you're talking about. So I need no. tooling, I need the data and the analytics to help get through that. I, right, I shouldn't have to spend half an hour on level one support. And that's shouldn't have to go through multiple forms the same yes. time. And, and you're, and you're yeah. right, Stu, that's always been the, you know, that's always been the mantra for, for Flexpod since the word yes. dot. I mean, we have a, you know, we don't get to an 11 billion dollar install base unless you're doing something right. And, and, and the word, the reason the word flex is in there, and, and you know, it's a dichotomy whenever you go into these sorts of discussions, do you make it really fixed? Right, which is almost like, I call it like a straight jacket, right? Do you, yeah. you mean, but, but you know what you get, yeah. right? Or do you make it flexible, right? And, and, and the flexibility really addresses the business need as opposed to the technology need. So the product guys love it when it's fixed, the customers love it when it's flexible. Yeah, you're talking about the basically a changes, you want changes to be rolling with the tech, technology, rolling with the changes. Yes. Not be stuck in the straight jacket, or we also say tailor-made suit, but you know, things change, you want to, fashion changes. So this is a real big issue, and you know, you talk about support. I think the ideal outcome is not to even call support. With analytics and push notifications and AI, yeah. you can almost see what DevNet's doing here around how developers are getting involved with DevOps and network DevOps. Yep. Coders can come in and use the analytics if tightly integrated in, so that you get the notification, or they know exactly your environment. Is that, how far along are you guys on that path? Because you know, the analytics play a big role. You've got the, the command center there, or the uh, uh, Converse System Advisor. Yeah. Implies advising, 
resolution, prescription. Yep. What's, yes. what's the so, vision? What's the so, vision? So Immersive was a Cisco solution partner at the very beginning. So we were a part of this, this group right behind us. And uh, it was exciting to, to be a part of that, to attend Cisco Live and be a part of, of DevNet. And uh, we expanded upon, as you mentioned, the, you know, the API integrations of all these platforms. And when Cluster Data on Tap came out for NetApp, we did the exact same thing. Right, so we get integrated with NetApp and uh, very easily able to bring all that data in. Now, massaging that data is the hard part, yeah. right? Understanding what is noise and, and what is the, the real goodness. And so you have to find those best practices, look at the, the hard work that our teams have done around validated designs between Cisco and NetApp, and uh, look at the best practices that come uh, from those particular pieces of hardware, and then once the, that intelligence is built, correlating that in the cloud service is really where the magic happens. Uh, so our teams are back there talking with the uh, network experts, yeah. the storage experts, the compute networks, the virtualization experts, and so when we, when we have that data, now you can decision here, right? You can start uh, advising your reseller. So we, we bring up the rules dashboard, and then we do have alerting that we can send to ticketing systems to yeah. you know, the remedies, the service now, the BMC. interesting, I'd love to get the product uh, perspective on this and on the, across the bigger picture because the trend we're seeing certainly on theCUBE over the past few years and most recently this year is the move from device, hardware to system. So the systems oh, yes. approach yes. really becomes more of a holistic view where you're looking at the, the holistic view of multiple things happening. Yes. It's not just, this is the box, no. here's where the rack is, you know, see, command line interface. You guys taking that same approach, can you just add some color on NetApp's vision on looking at holistically, because that really, yeah. where software shines. Your no, no, and, that, and that's absolutely, so, so we, we always see, we've always seen Flexpot as a, if we call it converged system, right? And, and for that exact reason. So what CSA is able to do is to look at anything that happens within that converged system in the context of the overall system, and that, and that really is the key, right? When, when, you, when, you, when you understand things in context, it means so much more. Just think about when you listen to someone talk, a word taken out of context means nothing, right? So, so when we listen to that infrastructure, what it tells us is, is understood in context. And what it will ultimately do, and you I think you were kind of hinting at this, John, you know, the vision here is that there will be self-healing infrastructures, self-healing converged systems, just like the cloud, right? Where so, so, so we are continuously monitoring uh, the, the configuration, the availability, and other aspects of your converged system, and we are able to take action to make sure it stays on the rails. We saw you guys at the RSA event, you guys had a small little party we went to, and we were kind of riffing, having fun with some of the NetApp folks, and you know, the big trend in cloud is serverless, so the joke was, is this a storage-less solution coming? I mean, to your point about this, if you think about it, <laughs> it's just storage somewhere. I mean, this is kind of a joke, but it's also kind of nuanced. This is elastic. No, no, I, it, it's absolutely true. If you, if you look at look at NetApp strategy, you know, if you look at our cloud strategy, we're you know we are uh, we're the first third-party branded service as part of the Azure Azure Core services. We're not in the marketplace. We're actually part of Azure Core, and uh, it's uh, it's uh, NetApp cloud volumes for Azure. And uh, you know, a customer doesn't know what's going on behind the scenes. But let's be clear, we're talking about software-defined storage here, right? So and cloudified too, as well. I mean, talking about cloud operations. Yeah. See, look, at the end of the day, you know, uh, for us, uh, our intellectual property is not really tied to hardware. We obviously yeah. use that as a way to get our intellectual property in the hands of our customers. But it's we're not tied to it. You guys made a good bet on cloud. I remember talking before uh, Korean took over. You guys were kicking the tires on Amazon years yes, ago. Yes, yes, yes. So that's it's right. Not like a Johnny come lately to the cloud. You guys have been deep and again. Absolutely. The core. Well, the end of the segment, I want to just get your thoughts because you guys are here at Cisco Live. What should the audience understand that couldn't make it out here is the top story at Cisco Live. And what is your role with Cisco here? What's the big story, top line, high order bit, NetApp, Cisco story? So I'll go first and I'll, I'll let my friend here go second. So, so look, you know, um, we, we were really excited coming into Cisco Live, right? Um, you know, we, we had this pretty big announcement last week. There were, there were a few different aspects to it, but I'll talk about two of them. Uh, a new focus between Cisco and NetApp on verticals around, around FlexPod. And, and what that really means is that we're focused on very specific verticals, including healthcare, but there'll be others that come down the line. We announced a, a new solution based on Epic, 
EHR. Uh, we announced some lead customers, including uh, um, the, the uh, Mercy Technology Services, which is part of the Mercy Hospital Group. Um, and um, so that, that was super exciting. I think what it does is it just demonstrates that our focus is on the outcomes as opposed to the actual infrastructure. The infrastructure is just a way to deliver that. So we're very excited about that with Cisco. The second thing that we announced was, as I said, that mentioned this managed private cloud. We actually announced it with, uh, with four uh, of our major joint partners, um, Dimension Data, um, Proact, uh, Microland, and uh, oh my lord, E Plus. Yes, of course. And um, that was um, that was super exciting as well. And, and you know, it's what it does is it captures the imagination. And it's always very fun when you're sitting at standing at a booth, and people say, oh, you know, I've known Flex, I've seen you guys around. But you know, there's always something new to talk about. The relevance is more. Than Absolutely. Ever. Keith, yeah. what's your what wave is NetApp riding right now? If you look at the Cisco action going on, what they're going through. What should people know about the big wave that you guys are taking advantage of right now? I think the, the big wave has absolutely got to be what we're doing with the hyperscalers, right? I mean, we, we by far have taken uh, the industry, I think, by storm when you think about what we've done with Microsoft, what we're doing with Google, you know, um, sorry? And Amazon. And Amazon, yeah, sorry. thank you. <laughs> uh, sorry. And small uh, companies. It, yeah, just small, small <laughs> hyperscalers, right? And uh, it, it's amazing what we can do with Cloud on Tap uh, across those vendors. And, the, and when we look at what our customers have done with FlexPod and the relationship with Cisco and NetApp, and our ability to work together to help customers get their data from their core data centers to cloud back to their customers, and for us to be able to use analytics the way we do on FlexPod, I, I think there's a, a real, real opportunity. And riding there. the scale wave too is scale. Scaling is huge. Everyone's talking about large scale. Talk about hyperscalers. That is as large as scale well, as you can see. Well, and and our ability to control where the data lives, right? Um, because. You, you want to be able to hold control of your data and being able to use familiar tools like what you're already using in your own data center and in your own converged infrastructures, being able to use that ONTAP operating system, be able to control that experience is, is going to be very important. Guys, thanks for coming in for the NetApp update. Great news, great alignment with Cisco. It's a large scale world and certainly the world's changing. Storage is going to be you know, a critical part of it. Server, storage, infrastructure cloud operations on-premise and in the clouds. The Cube, bringing you live coverage. I'm John Furrier, Stu Miniman. Stay with us for more day three of three days of coverage here in Orlando, Florida for Cisco Live. We'll be right back. <laughs>